Hey there everybody, Mazrock here, and today I have a 16 ruby life pools that was almost timed, but I had made a few mistakes along the way that kind of screwed us in the end of timing it. But what I wanted to do here was actually go through and coach myself. One of the things that I miss doing is the YouTube coaching videos and things like that. But I honestly feel like I need a little bit more experience and who better to rip apart than me? I can dang it. I'm five. I'm my own worst critic. So <laughs> let's rip myself apart in this video. Uh, do a quick disclaimer here. This isn't about what the DPS did wrong, this isn't about what the healer did wrong, this is about what I did to improve and uh, did that I can improve and get better at and not screw up. There is a Patreon link down below if you wish to support me directly, if you want LVOI profiles, weak auras, all in one document, you can get that there. There's currently a poll uh, going on for which tank that I'm going to focus on next. Prop Pally, Blood DK, Bear, and Vengeance Demon Hunter are all there. Currently, Vengeance is in the lead, so if you want to help secure that lead, or if you want to see a different tank, get focused on next and see a lot more content, because Season 1 is very difficult to do all all of the tanks, and expensive, because crafting, Patreon link down below, there's a Twitch link down below, a Discord link down below, and uh, there's t-shirts for sale. I only do Dungeons Fully Erect, I don't want, I only want, I don't want to calm down, I only want to rage, and of course, uh, Blood DK, I'm the healer now, you can get those at the Teespring link down below. And that is it. Oh, like, comment, subscribe, the fun stuff. Yeah, it's a new year, new goals. We're aiming for 12K by the end of the year. Let's do it, because uh, I want to see, I, I want to do this full time. You guys want more content? I want to do more content. Now let's get, uh, let's push this back right to the beginning here and see where I screwed up on the first poll, because I very much did. Like I said, there's some mistakes that I made along the way. Number one, the first mistake I made and I only noticed this uh, much later in the dungeon, which I, I, much later, first boss, I did not take spell block. Spell block, while not needed in every dungeon, uh, it's quite useful in most of the dungeons, but it is basically a requirement to have for uh, Ruby Life Pools as a prot warrior. Um, I did not like the way that I pulled this right off the bat, because as you can see here, my back... Were t uh, was to all the mobs that I was trying to bring in, and I was trying to LOS, but I wasn't doing it well enough. I had commented this on stream when I was pulling. I immediately, I was just having a bad time with kind of positioning and things like that, and uh, just working around things defensively, and I should have absolutely had spell block here to help me out, because there everything is spell blockable in Ruby Life Pools pretty much. And where is going to gr graciously increase your life in uh, in Ruby Life Pools. Uh, Sanguine has been kind of just a miserable week all around. Uh, especially for Prot Warrior that doesn't have the grips to get things out. And it seems like every time a fresh Sanguine pool is about to spawn and I start kiting things away, things start casting really long, unkickable, unseeable casts. That's been a lot of fun. Now, uh, up next, I opted for this three-pack... Which what I should have done is I should have gone up here and pulled this here because it always gets pulled. And a little bit later on in the dungeon, uh, like the next poll, we're going to see that it does. And things don't go exactly right. And I could have pre-planned some... Uh, I could have pre-planned some quality of life by just pulling it ahead of time. And that's kind of a trick with a tank. Like... How much, how much do you have to pull around your DPS butt pulling for you? Like, there's some things that are in my routes, literally for just because they always get butt pulled. As much as I try not to, they always get butt pulled, and that's gonna. This is one of those things that's always gonna happen in uh, in certain dungeons, and I think Ruby Life Pools is going to be the same. I just think it is always going to occur that way, and there's no other way around it, so pre-plan for butt pulls. <laughs> uh, one of the things that can be useful in this dungeon as well, especially in a pug environment where you need more kicks, is Challenging Shout. I know Warrior has tree is insanely good, and giving stuff up is not, fun, not always fun, but giving up uh, 
giving up a point for challenging shout in a pug environment, something less organized, can really, really help save you as a tank. And uh, so that's one thing that you can consider here. Uh, so here, my next poll is all of these. This is actually what I wanted. I wanted a kick on the far one. So there we go. Uh, this is where things are going to get bad, though, because that little pack off to the side, like I said, is going to end up getting pulled here, and I am going to suffer the consequences. So as this pack goes on, boom, we have a butt pull. Plan around butt pulls, like I said earlier. Uh, I am going to do my best, and my best wasn't quite enough for this one. Uh, just because I had kind of already blown a lot of stuff and I wasn't really prepared and spell block would have come in insane handy here. I had already blown shield wall and I screwed up a heroic leap, got some whelps and I just kind of compounded the problem with a little bit of panic, which by the way guys, that does happen. You know, I'm sometimes I'm cool, calm, and collected throughout the entire dungeon. Let's go, I got this, I got this. And sometimes you have some moments of panic. That happens. It's just something we, you know, you have to work around. So these guys here popped Earth Ellie, I think, and uh, managed to keep the pull alive while they started kiting back and getting a little bit of free space. I came in, challenging, shouted, and uh, we started getting everything back under control again. So we only had the one, uh, but then something got stunned. Sanguine, it's always something. It's always something, man. I hate, I, like, Sanguine as an affix is just incredibly annoying. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sanguine as an affix is just incredibly annoying. Like, these dungeons have so many mechanics, and then you just pile Sanguine on top of, and it just becomes really not fun. Uh, like, honestly, Ruby Life Wool would be one where, like, it could only have one affix, and I'd be totally fine with it. Like, I'd be totally fine with it. For this one here, the Earth Shaper, like, that one, my fault. I should have moved away from the Sanguine, because it likes to run back to me and then charge to someone else. But, kind of is what it is. For this one here, I like to tank him in, kind of, around the corner here, just so we don't get any, uh, Izzy infused whelps. Because if you don't know, if you run over, or he runs over any of the eggs, um... I think it's mostly you, but if any of the eggs gets touched, you get infused whelps, which just compounds the problem. He does a steel barrage cast, this one here, that is actually really, really nasty on the tanks and is something that you want to prepare around and something that you want to, uh, something that you want to have, <laughs> have ready and be ready for. And then he does a charge that leaves a very nasty dot and you don't want to be in front of that. But yeah, really... Honestly, this guy's not super terrible. Just don't be in front of the Blazing Rush. Everything's kind of fine there. We're going to skip ahead to the boss. Uh, I'll back up. Just uh, I backed up a little bit too far. Here I was talking about the Blubbery Muffins that turned you into a Tuscar. Uh, give you a nice little Tuscar skin. This is another boss where, honestly, Spell Reflect... Not Spell Reflect. Spell Reflect comes in huge. But uh, Spell Block comes in huge as well. Uh, Ruby, like I said, if you're playing Prot Warrior, Ruby Life Pools, Spell Block, it will change your life. It will make things uh, so much easier for you. For this one here, I would have actually liked to call to have us a little bit more stacked up for those Hail Bombs. Because as you see here, we're losing so much floor space. So I'd like to start somewhere and kind of us not dog pile on, but have a loose spread over certain areas to have us going around. And, uh, yeah, but kind of is what it is. This is always a difficult point with the frost overload. You want to get the shield down as fast as possible. If you have the flex point, wrecking throw adds a nice little touch, does a lot of extra damage to shields there. If that's something that you want and you're going to get two of them, but you know, is what it is. It can see some use up top if you do not have a uh, shield as well, but, uh, purge. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. And again, here with the hail bombs, right? We're also spread out and we're losing so much space so quick. Where I, if we just put some markers down and called for loose spreads specifically around the room, we would have so much extra space to work with that we kind of uh, could work around and things like that, right? Uh, but yeah, so this is just a very tough healer boss. This is a very tough, I mean, this is definitely a tough healer dungeon. 
So uh, give your healers a little break. Uh, play more defensively wherever you can. Uh, damage is, you know, damage is obviously very, very needed here, but also at the same time, uh, living is very important. This is one where you want to make sure that you have pots available. You want to make sure that, you know, you're using health stones wherever possible. Uh, pretty much everything that you can do to help yourself, help yourself. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this boss is, this boss has some of the more simple mechanics, but they do truck, right? They're not, they're not complicated mechanics, but they do truck. And then here, loose spread. So again, we're, we just lose so much room here. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put three, uh, three markers in the room before we, we pull the boss and be like, all right, we're going to stack We're going to loosely stack around triangle first, move to square, move to triangle. And that's something that you guys can do yourself as well. I'll be posting videos about that later on, but, uh, until you, your group can kind of get into that motion, but we're still kind of figuring it, you know, most people are still kind of figuring out this dungeon and things like that, because this definitely has a lot of mechanics. Up next, we are going to go upstairs and we are going to fight the wonderful thundercock who on beta was the bane of everyone's existence. But now it's Flame Gullet. <laughs> the fire one was the easy one in beta. Thundercock was the hard one. Now that's been reversed, which I think is actually hilarious. So this guy here does a pushback. And I try to use the landscape around me to avoid that pushback to get as much uptime as I can on the mini boss. So here I'm using this bench, um, which we're actually gonna go ahead and listen in. I'm also, this build is weird too, cause my plague expires in like 13 seconds instead of like 35, like raid. So I have to really like watch that. Ah. It's not normally something you have to watch. Cause normally it'll auto apply. Frontal. So I'll help that. Yeah, I'd say I'd rally, but I don't have it. You're fine. It's just if I dispel both of them at the same time, yeah, we yeah. die. Oh my god, that bench almost touched me. Whatever that thing is to my yep, I almost couldn't get over it. I almost yeah, that's a resto me. druid in their new glyph form. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he does do the dispel, which is a healer mechanic. Which you, oh, every dispel that happens, so you do not want to mass it. You want to dispel one, top everyone off, dispel the other, because it does kind of explode there. I was just letting my healer get some mana. And so these guys here, now, oh, these, are, these are tough. You want to kick every cinder bolt that you can, or stop every single one, but you do want to save CDs, uh, CCs, sorry, for, um, the flame dancers. Now there are none this pull, yeah. And our DK just got wrecked. Every, both cinder bolts targeted him at once. Uh, th like these these things truck, man. These things truck. Uh, you so you want to rotate C C like kicks and CDs as best as you can to try and you know stop a lot of this. Going for honed reflexes uh, is also a very good option to get a shorter kick. I know it's only like two seconds total, but every time you can get a slightly shorter. See, like, it will compound add up to a lot more kicks in a dungeon. Uh, so, so far in dungeons, I've been running a lot of the the two seconds off with the two talent points. But, yeah, especially in dungeons, like, there's times where, like, I went over to, like, Vengeance, and I'm like, I, I miss my, my 13 second kick. I miss it. <laughs> Uh, so these ones here, these ones here all kind of have the same mechanics for the entire kind of circle. The cinder weavers, you want to kick the cinder bolts. The flame dancers, you want to kick, uh, you want to stun the flame dance. And as well, when they do the blaze of glory at the end here, we'll show, I'll show this off. As, uh, you want to make sure that you can purge off the shield. And if you purge off the shield, they immediately die. So they'll either, they'll, uh, they'll... <laughs> Excuse me, they'll, they'll either finish the entire cast of Blaze of Glory and make your life a little bit more difficult through area denial, or you can just per, have someone purge off the shield, Vengeance, Arcane Torrent, uh, all that fun stuff, and they'll just die immediately and save you the grief. But yeah, so this is really kind of just pull after pull of exactly what it is. The, the mechanics aren't necessarily numerous with this one. Uh, they just, you know... They do compound and they do hit like trucks. Uh, there is a living bomb cast. Boom, living bomb on him. So the living bomb cast is going to go on a DPS or healer. Pretty sure it's always a DPS. You want them to 
throw them up and help with interrupts and CCs and all of that fun stuff. But up next, we're going to go over. We're going to skip ahead to uh, this pull here. Now, our goal here is actually to avoid Flame Gullet. We're trying to not pull him at all. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do this pull and go up the stairs while Flame Gullet, you can see him, he is off to the background over there. His pathing on this side is over on this side and then he comes around here and back and forth and by pulling this pack onto the stairs, you can actually avoid him. Now, I end up screwing this up in the end. <laughs> Pretty sure. But, <laughs> uh, we had something occur here and uh, yeah. But exactly this, so here we pull it, uh, and we go around. Pretty simple, nothing complicated, just pull it up to the stairs, get some kicks, uh, get some movement abilities, typhoons, whatever you have to push things up the stairs as quickly as possible. And then this pull goes very well with no real problems, we're all good. We don't pull the boss. Uh, there's a little bit of sanguine, I think, I'm not sure. Let's see here, Flame Dancer, purged, done. Oh, he didn't get purged on this one. <laughs> oh, there we go, he got purged. <laughs> so, me in a rush, this is kind of like just me being a warrior and zug zugging as much as possible. This guy's gonna die, and then I am immediately gonna heroic leap on ahead, because this is a zug zug prot warrior. Um, and... Flame Gullet. Now, here's... Okay, we're going to go in on a little listen in here. I'm just going to skip back to this. Put the volume up. No, oh, shit! Did you get it? No! Like, no, I did not! Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're you eating like brakes good. fucking locked up there. Holy shit. <laughs> I actually ended up did pulling him, but his flying animation doesn't actually stop. So this is something that you might want to be aware of, depending on how close that you get. But here, boom. So his flying animation brought us up without an aggro table, we think. Now this is theorized, we don't really know. Uh, but we were mid-pull, we had just bu busted a bunch of CDs. We were not ready for him to drop, so this is going to end up being a group wipe. Kind of is what it is. Uh, entirely my fault. Uh, if you're a Zug Zug warrior such as myself, uh, maybe, and you know you're trying to do some sort of careful skip, don't heroic leap on ahead <laughs> as quick as possible. Because uh, I like, I, I mean, I like the movement. It is what it is. But this is going to end up being a group wipe. Things are just going to go down very, very quickly. Flame Gullets. We had bur burned a bunch of our cooldowns on the mob ahead, so we didn't really have much. Um, my bad. Uh, up next uh, is pretty much a lot of the same. We end up going to not pulling Flame Gullet at all. We did not need him. Life was fine. And we just do the next packs as normal. Boom. Done. And we keep moving on and keep moving on. Up next, uh, I want to make sure that my healer is like topped off on mana. He said he was okay. Uh, I didn't fully believe him, but here we are. Now, Kokia Blazehoof is uh, actually nasty. Actually nasty. And this is not my first time watching this video. I watched it this morning, and I kind of wanted to get an idea of where I was going and stuff like that. Uh, but one of the things that she does, and this is a serious tank problem, that is also very good for Spellblock, by the way, is that Searing Blows cast. That Searing Blows cast leaves a nasty dot that is stackable for each time she's hit you with uh, Searing Blows. What I did in a different run later on is I would... Taunt the ad right here, and this is this worked perfectly for me uh, before. I won't, don't want to say perfectly, it worked well. Is taunt the ad before going to it, leaving Kokia where she is, because while this ad is up is when she casts Searing Blows, but Searing Blows can be outranged, can be sidestepped, but it's very difficult to do if you're just kind of uh, going on the ad. But that also means that you're relying on the DPS to really kind of... 
uh, kill the ad as fast as possible. So what I was trying to do was get as close as I can that I could kick and damage the ad, but position the boss in such a way that I could easily just sidestep the searing blows. Because uh, as you see here, getting four stacks of that right now just trucks you. So this is something during that ad phase that you as a tank need to be very aware of is that searing blows cast that's what's going to kill you 90 percent of the time and is really just terrible but you don't need to be in it you can actually just avoid it but you have to play around it and you do have to trust your dps to get this ad down as much as possible now what you can do is wait for the searing blows cast to occur then move to the ad side both sidestepping the searing blows or getting out of the way and then being able to maximize damage. Because if you're trying to get out of the Searing Blows directly onto the bot, like with, with a malpositioned boss ar around the ad, you're going to have a, a really, really hard time. And it doesn't take long after the ad is spawned for her to uh, start casting that. So that is something that, you know, really, really important there that I definitely learned along the way. This is Area Denial Fight at its best. But yeah, so like here, you can see I actually ended up uh, not sidestepping it well enough, uh, but you really do need to range it. So keeping her away is uh, going to be a lot better, getting behind her, things like that. Uh, I was testing this as best as I could. There are ways. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy at all. And then here we pulled... I pulled all of this, even though my healer had, like, no CDs, but I was like, go, 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 go. We, this is timeable. This is timeable. Even with our wipe on flame, Galet, this is timeable. Uh, for this one here, especially on Thundering, you this this Tempest Channeler is just terrible. This is who your prio ad is. Although you want to kick and see, uh, CC the others wherever possible, this one is absolutely your prio ad to kill first. So that because if they start channeling Lightning Storm in a Sanguine Puddle, which we all know they love to do, uh, it's gonna be a bad time. <laughs> So here we killed it first, then we just started cutting around and moving forward. Uh, really nothing too special about these. Purge off shields wherever you can, if you can. Move things along. Uh, these flame channelers. Now this one's here, cast flame fire, and they are, it's nasty. This is the prio kick here. And if you notice that as, uh, as a tank, nothing is really being kicked much in the dungeon that you're running... This is the one you need to focus on. This is your, you know, uh, rebellious fist cast from Spires. Like, that is absolutely the thing that you need to focus on if no other DPS are kicking stuff. <laughs> like, without a question of a doubt. And go along there. And then here, this pull always freaks me out. Because this is so, they're so close. Like, they are so close to one another. I tried to heroic leap off to the side here and grab all of them. And I just totally screwed up this entire pull. Uh, I'm not happy with the way I did this one at all. I would totally refix it. You can purge off those shields off the Primal Thunderclouds, by the way. Here you have two channelers. You have the Flame Channeler and the Tempest Channeler. Uh, the Tempest Channeler does have some things you want to kick with the Thunderbolts, of course, but the Flame Channeler has this Flash Fire that should not be allowed to go off. Like, it, can, like it you just saw, it follows someone. It absolutely wrecks so much. It's unreal uh you do not want this going off uh, at all uh deal with the thunderbolts if you have to but that flame fire absolutely needs to to be kicked uh this is this trash is deadly guys this trash is very deadly and out of all of the pulls in the game and as you see here tempest channeler in sanguine fresh puddle just immediately starts casting i was like come on man i'm trying to kite you out i'm on the other i'm like 12 feet away from you like let, come on and sometimes they just don't want to listen but yeah so this is kind of where it goes this is where we were and this next poll is going to be uh unpleasant actually and the same thing is going to happen so there's a couple of factors here a couple of factors are definitely on me Without any question of a doubt on me where I should have been better, I should have watched my surroundings a little bit more, I should have kicked better, I should have pulled better, I could have been better enough to time this key. And that's why we do this, right? 
We look at our mistakes. Rotationally, uh, I think I could have casted uh, more Ignore Pains. Uh, I didn't have my two set at this point. I think I only have my one set. I'm not 100% sure. But I basically lived in defensive stance uh, coming up here. Uh, I didn't have spell block, so I was like, yep, yeah, no, up here, I just let, we're going to have to just do defensive stance and go here. This high channeler, Rivati, is absolutely nasty beyond belief. Um, you can just see the outgoing damage. This is definitely a healer check, but as you see me as a prot warrior here, I'm doing 30, I peaked to 40k healing. Like, it's just constant ignore pains, constant go. I'm trying to get more damage, but here she casts that stupid lightning storm directly. I, she was almost out! Like, she was almost out! And I'm trying to get her out, and honestly, that should have been my prime focus, is getting her out. And then no matter what we what we did, she always kept casting in Sanguine. And it was just like, come on. And she's very difficult to move around. So in Sanguine scenarios or things like that, if you have any opportunity to move her just out of the range of any Sanguine Puddles, uh, do so. Uh, but yeah, so here we, we do end up killing her. And the boss actually goes very smooth. We don't have any problems on the last boss. But those are some of the key things I noticed that I really screwed up. From a basic rotation standpoint, from everything that I've seen, I'm very happy with my shield block up time. Although spell block would have definitely been huge. Uh, I'm I'm really I'm kind of just all around happy. Like I can't say anything. Um, I like the way that I, I rotated my cooldowns. I could have used shield wall a little bit more. I I'm still to a point now where I'm not as freelance with it as I was before. Uh, before I used to cast it just a lot more, and now I think I'm holding on to it a little bit too long. So that's something I'd like to improve on. Although, Last Stand now gets used on cooldown. I love having that 15 seconds of shield block tied to it. It really, really does help. Uh, by the way, I will be linking my uh, my Mythic Plus build that I'm using for these down below. Uh, there are some flex points in that Mythic Plus build. Uh, but yeah. So, for this one here, as I'm just going to go back before we pull. I get everyone to stack on Square Marker around here. Because that actually makes the boss, the Dragon Boss come to you guys the more in the middle you guys are if the party is the more he's not going to be off in narnia and he is actually who you need to focus down eckhart storm i think it's eckhart yeah eckhart storm vein while he is troublesome on his own he, all he does is like a tank debuff and some random hits he's really not bad a lot of the sorts of frustration actually comes from the dragon and on DPS and on Pugs, sorry, I what I do notice a lot is a lot of people just focus the, the easy target, right? The, the guy that's always down. But that dragon is the source of all of your frustrations. Your area denial with the, the fire pools, the flame breath, that makes positioning so much harder. All of that is the dragon. Now, do note here as well, I'm just going to skip. What You do lose threat on everything when that dragon drops and that needs to change blizzard if you are watching this i know you're not but if you are watching this why am i losing threat on something that i've just been attacking a bunch that jumped on a dragon and i only have one taunt so if you magically lose threat on something else i mean yeah i can heroically regain taunt but come on but yeah aside from that this goes vi very well we manage our pools fairly good, and I like my positioning here, where I bait things as much as possible towards the center kind of sides, and we have lots of room to move. We can pretty easily, like here, I had an easy path uh, to get around. I did get hit by the tank buster, but uh, no, like, dragon goes down, and then this is where the fight kind of calms down. There's nothing crazy that goes on here. You just get the storm slam, uh, tank bust, uh, tank debuff that just needs to get dispelled. And you just kind of relax. Once the dragon's dead, this is just a, a tank and spank. Really not that big of a problem, but you really want to focus down that dragon. But all in all, we were like far, four, five, six seconds off. We it really, we were so close. 
But I did learn a lot from this dungeon. I did learn a lot from how I uh, how I operate in this dungeon and how I want to pull. So those are the things that I can take away. Like I said, I have no problems ripping me apart. Let's go. I want to be better, and sometimes being better means that you need to kind of look at your own VODs and do things like that. But thank you very much to my patrons for making videos like this happen. I hope you have yourselves a good day, and thank you very much for listening, and happy tanking.